Hickok 45 here. And I kind of wish I had a 45. Maybe I do. <laughs> yeah, 45. Let's put some more ammo in it. I wanted to miss that two liter on purpose just to, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going low. <laughs> I don't know. Let's hit the gong. There we go. Last one on the gong. Okay. So it's easy to miss, even when you're close. Okay. That's really what I was trying to demonstrate there. That it's easy to miss. So I wanted to miss on purpose. I told John before the video, I'm going to miss that two liter three times just to show people that it's easy to miss up close. Can you believe that? No, you don't, because it's not true. Yeah, this is the Colt Defender, Colt. And it's a, a Defender, right? It's a small pistol you could use to defend yourself. So we're going to uh, put it through its paces here. And I'm gonna tell you what I think about it and uh, you know how we like it. John has shot it and I have shot it. I've shot another one like this. We'll tell you about one. And here it is, the Colt Defender, an interesting little 1911. And uh, before we go any further, let me tell you, this is the second one that I requested. Uh, the first one uh, just malfunctioned so much, could not even do a video with it. It was like two or three rounds per magazine. Uh, the extractor was apparently too loose or too tight. I don't know. It, it was really loose, tightened it up some, and it didn't help seem to make it worse. And so I just sent it back. I'm not going to be a gunsmith or uh, go through all that. If it were a gun I purchased somewhere... I, I might have, uh, yeah, I would have worked that out and just kept it. Because I know that the extractor is often the problem, if, as long as you got good magazines, with a 1911. And uh, we have had new Colts before, John and I, where we had to tweak the extractor uh, brand new to, to get them to work reliably. And then they work fine, you know, for the next decade. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, sometimes whoever's tweaking the extractors doesn't always get them right. But it's, it's not, a, I guess, a design problem, uh, John Browning. It's, it's just getting all the parts right and tweaked correctly with the right tension, and then, then they're reliable. And that's the thing about a 1911. It's one reason some people badmouth them all the time as being unreliable, because if everything's not tweaked right, they can be. Whereas I could go buy 49 SIGs today, 49 M&Ps probably, 49 Glocks, and every one of them is going to fire the first thousand rounds without any pro problem, right? Rugers, you know. But there's something about the design of the 1911. A great gun, but the extractor has to have the right amount of tension on it. And if you get that thing in there too loose or too tight, it, it can cause problems. So anyway, I, I sent it back and said, yeah, send me another one. We'll try it again. Okay. I shot that other one. I thought maybe just need breaking in 100, 150 times. Thanks, Federal. You know, uh, you supplied the ammo, and it just never got better. You know, so I thought surely it would. But uh, so this one, I shot five or six mags. That's it. it. It seems to work. I have no trouble with it. Okay, okay. We'll find out in the video. But it's worked fine. So I wasn't going to blast through another two, three hundred rounds of of uh, federal ammo just to to make sure it's working you'll see in the video how it works we'll shoot uh, a bunch here today all right so i'm going to get that uh, that information out there to you that's that's what we do you know let you know how these guns work and what we think about them now that said uh i was impressed with the other one when it fired uh how it fired and how accurate it seemed to be for me again accuracy is you know the shooter uh, and it's, it's all things combined, the grip, the trigger and, and everything sights, but I was able to shoot the thing. I, I thought pretty well when it was working, uh, when it would cycle, the rounds were hanging up in the chamber. There was no ramp issue. That's always the worst nightmare when they're hanging up on the ramp with the other one, uh, they were getting into the chamber, but not going all the way into battery. Uh, sometimes not very far at all, but they're all getting up into the chamber. And that's why I'm pretty sure it was an extractor uh, issue of some sort. Uh, so, and, and this one has had no, had no no issues, but I was uh, I was impressed. Let's get on to the positive now. I'm impressed with the way the things feel. I expected uh, John was with me. We picked it up at, at Elks Outdoors in uh, Pleasant View, uh, who ships our guns in. We appreciate them doing that too. That's Elks Outdoors in uh, Pleasant View, a uh, small gun shop there on Main Street. 
we were both in the shop, picked it up, and thought, wow, this thing's going to really jump. You know, it's a little 1911. It's 45, and it's light. It even, it even admits it. Look at that. On the slide, it says lightweight, and it is lightweight. It's about 24 ounces, 23, 24 ounces unloaded, and it's, it's light for 1911. It's got an alloy frame, you know, aluminum, stainless slide. Uh, it's Cerakoted on the frame, if I understand. Uh, so it's light, but with these uh, ho uh, Tamer grips, I think they're called, and I don't know, the spring setup, it, it doesn't knock you around as much as you would think. Let's put some ammo in it. It's, it's empty here. Let's uh, get some more ammo out and take a couple shots with it. It is more pleasant to shoot than I would have thought, because it is a short one, and it's a seven plus one rounds in the magazine and uh it well let's just shoot it something. i probably won't hit anything but by and large uh, let's see yeah i'm just gonna use regular length mags here i shot the the short ones didn't i i put them here well let me load i'll tell you what i want to do i want to try hollow points in so i'll load those anyway uh i'll load a couple of mags of these thanks to federal we got some hollow points hydro shocks here to try in it and with a 1911 you want to definitely check your uh, carry ammo whatever it is you decide to carry if it's hst or hydroshocks or gold dot or whatever it is you want to run quite a few of them through your 1911 any gun for that matter but especially 1911 make sure it feeds them okay all right so i guess it's dark enough to try one of them i'll remember that that's got a minute okay so we have hollow points here Let's put it in my, I've got this long pancake holster, it's for a standard 1911. All right, let's see if it'll work. Let's pull it out in slow motion, get the propane. Boom. <laughs> That's got some wallop to them. Uh, function fine. Now you gotta be careful with full length magazines. And that's what I'll be shooting a lot of because that's what I have so many of. If the slide is back and you cram it up in there real hard, like I'm guilty of sometimes, it can go too far and, and jam, go beyond the, the slide stop up there or the magazine stop and it can jam up the gun. So be aware of that. I think I, I read Wilson make some and I'm not who else makes them that have a, a stop on them. So you could actually have longer magazines would not have that issue. Because if you were firing, you know, the slide's going to be back probably when you need to reload, unless you do a tactical reload and know that you are getting close to empty. So if you reload with the slide forward, that's not an issue. But if the slide's back, something to remember. That pot just got knocked off there. He thinks he's going to survive. He didn't. Let's go back and try the gong again. Hello? Why did I pull the trigger? Okay, I need to bring it up, apparently. Yeah. All right, let's try that little red plate, or the, on the left. Okay. One reason I was impressed with the other one is uh, well, one day I brought it out here and like I said, when it was feeding okay, I was able to get shots off. I was able to hit that red plate uh, pretty regularly. Just got to get the sights up on it. Yeah, it's a good little shooter. I'm going to try a ram. If I came a little higher, maybe he'll roll. Or maybe I'll shoot low. I'll flinch and shoot low <laughs> like I did. That's the thing about a handgun. If you have the slightest amount of flinch, like that last shot, it looked like it hit about... Uh, well, whatever, four feet below the ram. 
it takes no flinch at all. That's why shooting a handgun is so tough. I'm gonna try to put one on his head or up high. Hmm. All right, there we go. Got one high enough. Try the turkey up there. Um, it's a good little shooter. Uh, what, three inch barrel? That's like nothing. Oh, we got a target rich environment right here, don't we? <laughs> oh, nice. Sweet. It's always fun to shoot a 1911. You notice how good I'm being about not cramming that magazine in there. So, you know, this thing would serve you well. Oh, we're out of ammo. I can't believe it. Uh, pretty nice little gun. It's, it's, a, it's a good shooter. And, and this one, apparently, the extractor is tuned properly. So, uh, what have I not told you about it? These things have been around a while. It's not like a brand new gun that just came out, and uh, I've never owned one. But it's uh, it's a pretty decent gun and fairly popular, I think. Let me. I guess I'll take it apart. I I have had a little problem getting it back together. These little 1911s and their spring configurations are not always uh, the easiest things uh, to manipulate. But you see what you got. I mean, it is 1911. Nothing too crazy about it. Uh, it's all good and dirty there. So it's a short little barrel, isn't it? So uh, this is, as you see, you got your firing pin block there. For those who don't know, that is something they started doing in the 80s. And uh, to protect the firearm, if you drop it, it won't fire just from inertia. That protects, keeps the firing pin from moving forward, just like most modern handguns have now. So that's why you can take a SIG or a Glock and sling it up against a brick wall. Would not recommend doing that with a round in the chamber and it really should not go off. Now don't do that, I'm not recommending that, but uh, I know when Glock, and again here I'm bragging Glock, but you know the others would do the same thing. Other companies that have that, that block, even these, they, uh, they, uh, they have a famous, there's a famous story, it's true apparently, where they were demonstrating the Glock for I don't know, military or large police agency or something somewhere, and they flew in with a helicopter and just dropped a loaded Glock, uh, condition one, round in a chamber, you know, and dropped it, you know, under the concrete, you know, just to demonstrate that safety and, and everything and the durability and things. So, but anyway, that's what that's about. Uh, okay, now let's put it back together. Let's see if I can keep from fumbling. Again, the slide is stainless steel, steel, still steel right always has been steel it's still steel and uh you got an aluminum frame that's where i had a little difficulty getting that and i'm not crazy about aluminum uh, frames i had a kimber a long time ago and I, I can't speak with authority about that company you know because that was i think the only one i ever owned and uh, the hollow point rounds were beating up the ramp. Uh, they literally were cutting it. They were denting it, not just, uh, not just, you know, hanging up. Uh, I don't even know that it was hanging up, but I, I took it back. Uh, and I know some companies now put a, well, let's see, who was it? Ruger, yeah, on their little commander. They've got a, an insert of titanium in the ramp, and that's why they do that. Okay, okay, for protection of it. And this is where I was struggling a little bit. You got lined up, but I wanted to take it apart for you. And if I struggle, I struggle. If I have to, I'll let you go to lunch and uh, you know come back. Nah, <laughs> won't be that bad. There we go. I think it's gonna line up. It's just a little different affair with this one. There we go. I think I got it told John if I break this thing apart just uh, be ready we might have to edit and bring them back in or something oh I had it going there and then I this this also happened once these little pistols are awkward as heck or can there we go okay all right plus I demonstrated with a what was it a bodyguard 
380 that I'm not exactly, uh, well, I could be fumble fingers at times when it comes to that. Okay, so I got her back together. Uh, ni a nice little gun. You know, it's got the commander hammer. It's got Novak sights, three dots, uh, no night sights on it. It's got a nice uh, beaver tail uh, safety. One thing they talk about, and they're, they're correct, because if, if, if anybody would detect it, I would. When, if you lay your finger up on the thumb safety, your thumb on the thumb safety, and, and then you pop it off and your thumb is still up there, you don't have much pressure against that safety down there. Still fires, okay? Some firearms do not. There, there are quite a few 1911s with a beaver tail and that hump there is big enough where it takes care of that. Uh, but if, if, cause I used to compete with my thumb up there back in the day. And, uh, I like that sometimes. So I like for that gun to fire, you know, okay. Cause when you bring your finger, your thumb down here, then you're getting a tighter grip on that. All right. So that might be important to some of you. All right. Let's shoot those other hollow points and let's replenish my mag pouch. Two hundred grain, two hundred thirty grain, uh, American Eagle, of course, as you see, with a variety of magazines. Now, if we do have a malfunction, uh, I, I don't know that whether it's a magazine or the gun or what, what's going on. If it's not with the original magazines, uh, that's always something to keep in mind. You know, the the two that came with it, and I've got one of those in there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's the other one, the short one. The rest of your standard seven, eight round mag. All right. More hollow points. More hollow points. Let's just take out a two liter with a hollow point here. Whew. Now, and let's take out that two liter with a hollow point or two. It's a good little shooter. I mean, it jumps because it's so light. But uh, I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna put it in my holster, safety on. And uh, now I'm gonna throw rounds all over the thing probably to some extent, but you know, this is what the little guns are for. They're not for shooting red plates and gongs at 80 yards, but uh, this is a zombie who is coming after me at close range. <laughs> And that's what you want to fire them, that you can, you can put them in a reasonable group at whatever that is, seven or eight yards, you know, uh, even if it's a small gun, all right? So good little shooter. So despite the issues we had with the other one, uh, I was impressed with it. Like I said, when it was, when it was firing, you know, they are... <laughs> It, it jumps around a little bit, but you can hang on to it pretty well. Oh, getting crazy here, huh? Hmm. I kind of like the thing. If I were going to carry a 1911, it would be a, a, one of the choices for me. <laughs> good, good little gun. Uh, I've got a Glock. A 26 holster too uh, recently I picked up just for when I want to carry it in a different way outside the waistband cross or whatever and this little thing fits in it just just easily you know it's uh, it's almost too loose for it and it you know it just weighs well let's see I should know I weigh so many different firearms that's about the same category or, or vicinity of a Glock 19 a Glock uh, 26 weight wise 27 I think 24 ounces 23 I forget but it's it's uh it's like modern polymer handgun uh, weight, kind of what we're talking about. And it's a small package, throws a big cartridge, uh, triggers about five pounds, and it feels pretty good. Uh, John doesn't like it as much as, as I kind of like it, okay? It's, uh, it's not a target trigger, but it's got a pretty nice break. Uh, you wouldn't have a lot of complaints about it. There's a lot of worse triggers, you know, 1911s. Uh, so anyway, Alloy frame, lightweight uh, defender. I see why they're they're fairly popular. Not a bad little little piece of hardware. Um, I uh, like I say I, I would 
if I was going to carry a 1911, this would be one that I would consider. I'm not crazy about alloy frames, like I said, alloy ramps. Uh, but then again, I'm not sure what the, the alloy is exactly, and maybe uh, that would never be a problem with what Colt's using you know, in these. I guess if it is, we'd have heard about it by now, right? Somebody would have, because these have been out a while. But a cool little package. It's kind of one of those, you know, everything you need and nothing you don't situations, you know, just big enough. And, uh, and from my reading about it, you know, because the, 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 the story is, generally, the consensus is, and has been for years, 1911 was designed to be five inch gun. You know, you get down to commander size, you're still okay. You start getting smaller than that, and you can have uh, function problems. And there's a lot of people that will not trust a 1911 smaller than a uh, commander. Okay? But the word on this one is, it's <coughs> kind of an exception. Kind of, kind of an exception. It even got John all choked up. You know, so. Okay, John had a little coughing attack there. <laughs> it was very rude of him, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know how he keeps from doing that ever. But anyway, as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, uh, you know, most people don't trust really small 19, well, I don't know about most people, but a lot of people don't trust 1911s if you get smaller than a commander. And, uh, but apparently, from what I've read, this is one of the exceptions. It's, it has a reputation for being reliable. Of course, I say this as I had to get a second gun, right? But again, once you get the, the extractors uh, tweaked and that stuff correct on a 1911, they can be extremely reliable, okay? So uh, it'll be the same for any other firearm, but I, I guess it's the design, the extractor, and, and just the des inherent design of it, and we don't want to be hard on John Browning, the genius, right? But, but you never hear about that, well, I don't, with uh, you know, someone having to take their SIG back, their 226, you know, or their Glock 19, or, or their M&P because the extractor was uh, not right or too tight. You know, it's just not as much an issue you know, with newer firearms, but it can be with the 1911 until you get it right and then it might be right next 20 years so anyway uh you know uh, aside from the issue with the other one a uh, pretty nice gun pretty nice gun life is good we'd like to thank one of our sponsors sdi the sonoran desert institute sdi has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology course of study includes hands-on experience which is important of course so check it out uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description okay and also we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as gun culture radio on iTunes now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it, okay? Thank you.